All right, moving on to the second objective, the looking at the different tools in ArcGIS that you can actually create and edit features. So we're going to look at different editing techniques and we're going to look at the editing tools. So when we're editing, it's usually because there is an error that we see. So what we, we do is we apply any of the tools that we have available to help reduce that or to remove the errors. And there's also the ability to use some of these tools as well. As, so when you are digitizing, you reduce any kind of strange things like that could happen, like for example, polygons overlapping that shouldn't be. So a few of them that are available are snapping, which is a very common one, splitting line tool, the autocomplete polygon tool, the cut polygon tool, the clip tool, and topology for map and planar. So all of these have um, definitely their place. So I'm going to cover a few of them that are the most important um, after this, but <laughs> they're coming up. So the when you're editing features, you can either edit a new feature class or you can edit a, a fe existing feature class. So when you do try to create a new feature class, you need to go into catalog or use toolbox. So there's two options there, right clicking or just searching for, for it in the toolbox. And um, you can either create them or modify them, um, any feature or multiple features in Pro. Then you can add your feature classes through add data and then drag and drop um, or the drag and drop functionality. So what that last one really means is you can bring it into the view um, by dragging and dropping it, or you can drag and drop it backwards. So if you create it in the window, you can actually put it right into your, your data geo database by dragging and dropping um, in, or using the add button as well. So what can you edit? So editing is always available, which is a really nice feature that the old version of ArcGIS didn't have. So we used to have to start an editing session and then stop the editing session and, and so forth. Um, but we don't need to do that anymore. So, but, but what's really key is that you can only edit Esri data types. So it has to be a shapefile or a geodatabase feature class. You can't do editing on anything else. There's also, you can also edit in tables. So um, that it's obviously with vector data, you can add more attributes, for example, but keep in mind that rasters cannot be edited. They are kind of what they are. You can do analysis on them, but you cannot change the pixels. So there is an edit ribbon at the top of the ArcGIS Pro screen. And you'll see that there's a whole bunch of different editing tools in here. Probably one of the most important is save. <laughs> so making sure that you know where the save button is over here, that's, that's really important. So there is an edit status that you can uh, um, that you can find, and this what this this particular window that pops up um, tells you what can be edited. So let's say you want to create a new feature, and you'll have this editing status that you can view. So for example, it'll say, "Oh, you can't edit that," or "There's um, it's editable, but there's a warning about it," or "There is something that's actually editable," and that's in the editing status. Then there's topology. So topology is really good for maintaining rules when you're digitizing. So you can use that in the dropdown. As you see, for example, with edit and there's a dropdown that says no topology. There's also map topology. So this, this allows us to maintain the topology rules as we are digitizing, which will actually keep things much cleaner and reduce a lot of the errors. Then there's editing options. So here you can see that they've chosen editing and there's all these different options in here. I'm not going to go through all of them today, but you, you can go through and say, oh, double click can be a shortcut to finish it or show the feature symbology in the sketch instead of waiting till after. Some of these should be left on because it's just easier to view and then show the editing toolbar on the map and you can tell where it's going to say and then you can magnify it automatically save edits that you can turn on a whole bunch of th things here. So um, that's in the editing options. 
Now, snapping is really important. <laughs> uh, sna snapping does help with the topology as well. So you can turn it on to actually like, snap two different points or, or lines or edges, vertexes, um, endpoints, it, just so that you don't end up with weird gaps or overshoots that happen. So it's very helpful that way. But sometimes it becomes really annoying because it starts snapping to things that you don't want to. So it's just an easy click on and off. Um, as you can see here, uh, you can just turn one on or I could turn on some. I can turn on all of them. It just makes it easier for me to prevent any like weird things from happening. I, I always think of it as filling a bucket when you're trying to um, create a, a polygon. And if you don't actually close the polygon, then everything's going to bleed out, just like a, a bucket. If a bucket's not fully, or like a can, I guess would be another example. A, a can, if you don't have it fully enclosed and you have a small opening, then everything's going to leak out or go bad, right? <laughs> so, so that's um, something that you can keep in mind with the snapping. There is something called a snapping tolerance that you can set. So this is how close the minimum distance, right? So how close two vertices are and whether or not they should come together. So here's an example that we have two here. If my snapping tolerance is, w if it's within this circle, it says, oh, these two are actually supposed to go together and then it'll snap them together like this. But if we have this last point here, and it's sitting outside of this circle, this snapping tolerance, then it's not going to snap into that point. So if, for example, if the cursor gets within that tolerance and it, the, the next mouse click like automatically sends it there, um, you'll, you'll actually see it, it changes shape on the screen as you do it. And that uh, if it's doing it too much and you don't want it to do it, then make sure you turn it off or decrease the minimum distance. So then there's create features. So what this does is it's a window that opens and you, you can choose what feature you are actually editing. So it's nice and easy. And then it also tells you how you can edit it. So for example, if I'm just going to draw lines, it allows me to do that. I could get curves. I can do intersections. It will have specific rules for each of these icons. So um, if you are editing, then it, it it just is an easy way and visual way to create those new features. There's also modify features. And for this one, it allows for reshaping. It allows dividing, constructing, alignment. You can move things around. So you can see here, we got all this stuff. So move, you can rotate it, scale it. So if you put something in place and, you, and it doesn't look quite right and you can change it, you can shift it, you can adjust a, a, a vertex change the geometry to something that actually looks like what it's supposed to look like. There's a lot of different features here that are really, really helpful. And again, it's just a simple button click for them. There's also attribute editing. So I can go in and actually change my attributes. Uh, this is really helpful if there's an error or if something has changed. So for basic maintenance, you can do multiple attributes as well. So that also helps. Uh, and it just keeps your data clean and up to date if you if you need to keep updating it. So all these editing tools are available in the editing ribbon. So you can, as you can see, there's a ton of them that show up, everything from merge. Um, you're going to definitely be using that at some point uh, throughout this semester, later in the semester. So get to know merge, um, get to know split as well. I'm just trying to find it right up here. There's merge up here and split. So there's a couple of different things. Those two are really, really helpful with um, some with one of the assignments that's coming up. And um, editing vertex vertices and moving is also helpful. So if you want to stop some editing from happening or hide it or anything like that, the, the thing is that if, if you hide it, that's fine. But editing is always enabled. It's really hard to like disable it and say stop. But make sure that you save your edit. So always hit that save. And if you've done something that you shouldn't have, you could press discard. But there's this edit button, and it's just going to stay on all the time, unless it's locked for some reason. And then if it's locked, then there's something else processing or running that doesn't correspond with the edit. So if I want to enable from, if I really want to get rid of it and I'm like, I don't want to accidentally move something or I don't want to accidentally start editing, you can click on, go to this manage edits 
button on the side here. And if you go to editing, you can click it, click this button here under session, and it will disable the editing from the edit tab. But for the most part, you want to keep it going unless it's something really, really um, needs the focus that doesn't allow for editing, I guess. I can't even think of an example that would disable it. But again, like I said, save your edit edits and keep saving them over and over and over again because they're really, really important that you save everything. So just as a summary, be, be aware that there could be errors. And that's, you look at the errors before you start editing or try to find them. And then you can try to fix them through the editing. It's also, editing is always available by default. If you really want to turn it off, you can, but I, I don't think there's any need to unless there's some reason that you have to. And then there's a t like m tons of tools, lots and lots of tools to help you do it quickly and easily. So it, it's actually a much faster process now than what it used to be. But I guarantee at some point in your life, in this career, you're going to be digitizing. So again, Keep working through chapter eight, and you know, this will be applied to assignment two, but it actually kind of comes, all this stuff comes after the next module. So if you're really excited, you can always get started on the other module. And that's my references for today, and thank you so much.